Well, hello. Welcome to our continuing devotional through the book of First Thessalonians. Today we're early into chapter 1. We're at First Thessalonians chapter 1, starting in verse 4, which says this. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Let's stop there. There's more to verse 5. Let's just stop there for a moment. One of the things that Paul is excited about and thankful for is that the response to the gospel message has shown that it's truly taken root in their life. Paul says, we know. We know that God has chosen you. We know you're the real deal. We know you're a part of God's people. Uh, and we know that because there's, there's, you know, not because we can see some mystical element. You know, when you become a Christian, a true Christian, there's, there's no physical evidence out. You know, there's no glow. Uh, there, there, there's nothing of that nature. But what there is is real change, and that's what Paul's talking about here. You know, a lot of people will raise their hands. They'll go down to the altar. They'll respond to an altar call at a mass crusade event. And I'm not against any of those things. But none of them really indicate whether the gospel has truly penetrated a person's heart. What, what, what shows that a person is really a member of God's family, Paul talks about in verse 5. He says, our gospel came to you not only in word, meaning not only did we... We speak to you, but the power of the Holy Spirit was present so that you had full conviction and we had full convictions. We shared it to you, with you and it brought forth a commitment to God that brings changes in your life. Now, Paul says, when we brought the gospel to you, you became an imitator of us. Uh, and you know what kind of men he says. Let me let me let me go back to verse five because we didn't finish reading that. He says, listen, for the second part of verse five. He says, you know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction and with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So Paul says, I'm so excited. I know you're part of the, the people of God, because when we spoke the word to you, we spoke it with full conviction. You know how we lived among you, but it didn't end there. You didn't just raise your hand. You didn't just say some words. You became imitators of us, the God, the apostles, and you became imitators of the Lord, verse 6. And not only did you show commitment to Christ and a life change in your life, but even though you received persecution and attacks and negativity and your families rejected you and they threatened you with jail and you lost your jobs, you received the word, verse 6 says, in much affliction. You know, it's one thing to, to be a Christian when Christianity is cool. You know, but when you really put the, the, the feet to your faith, when the reality of your faith shows is what happens when the world is against you, when following Christ costs you something, when there's affliction involved, that's when your Christianity is proven to be true or not true. Whether you show yourself to be a true member of the family of God or a pretend member of the family of God. Are you an imitator of, of the apostles and an imitator of the Lord? Do you follow Jesus through thick and thin, no matter what the cost, or are you a fair weather follower that as soon as there's some uh, cost involved, you, 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 you go in a different direction? That's what Paul talks about in verse 6. You became an imitator of us and of the Lord, for you received the word with much affliction. You had the joy of the Holy Spirit, verse 6 says, despite everything they lost. And then in verse 7 he says, for you became an example to all the believers of Macedonia and Achaia. In fact, he goes on to say in verse 8, not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith has gone forth everywhere, so we need not say anything. For they themselves report to us what kind of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he has raised from the dead, verse 10, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to Come. So what he's saying here is your faith was so genuine and so real, other people spotted it. And the, and your, the word spread says something's going on over there in that church. Those people are really changed. Uh, all over the world, people are hearing about this faith that has gone forth. Verse 8 says everywhere. 
And they report that you didn't just live and stay in the same kind of life you had before, but you turned from idols to the living God. You know, that's the evidence of true Christianity is life change. You turn from your old life to your new life, from what you used to serve, what is false, to serving what is true. And now you're waiting for the Son, it says in verse heaven, uh, whom Jesus raised, or whom God raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. All of that is not something we just speak with our mouths, but it's something that shows with our lives. And Paul says, we saw it in you, therefore we know that you're a member of God's family because our words came to you with full conviction. You are willing and, and faithful to Christ even in the midst of affliction. You are filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You turn from idols to serve the living God. And now you're waiting for his return and put all your hope in him. Hopefully those same things can be said of our lives. Have a blessed day.